Felix here, and good morning to you. Um, banking crisis overnight in Europe had some pretty dramatic moves. We're seeing a little bit of a calmer sea this morning, but the calmness is also dissipating. So it's really important to understand what's going on here. We'll run through what exactly happened to Credit Suisse, what the bailout means. We look at the market. Is the bond market still panicking as much as it was yesterday? Because yesterday, the bond market really, really, really freaked out. Um, of course, we always look at ways we can make money out of all of this. If you haven't already signed up for the masterclass held next Wednesday, March 22nd, I think it's a Wednesday, isn't it? Uh, March 22nd. Uh, links down below in the description. Sign up for it, felixfriends.org slash PA Wealth. I'll also post it into the chat here for you. Um, I do these to actually teach you the way that the market, well, the way Wall Street trades, the way I trade, and what I think is a, well, just how I, I can make money consistently. There it is. There's the link in the description. So, so check it out. Now, of course, none of the following is the financial advice. You know that by now. Just uh, an old banker sharing his thoughts uh, that he got from his golden retriever. That's generally speaking where the wisdom comes from. So um, is our trades this morning. Uh, what we want to look at is really this here. So Credit Suisse got a 50 billion franc, which is about $50 billion, give or take, um, credit line with the Swiss Fed, essentially the Swiss National Bank. Now, that's rarely a good thing. Why is that rarely a good thing? Well, you don't do that unless you think there is something really in trouble here. Um, they are going to meet again today as well. I haven't seen the results out from that yet. And Credit Suisse is offering to buy back some debt. So they're trying to basically get rid of their most expensive debt. That's sort of a common move when you are in this uh, situation. The European banking rally, however, is fading after an early surge. JP Morgan saying someone's going to buy Credit Suisse, some sort of uh, arm-twisting forced merger, I imagine. Maybe one of the other big Swiss banks could gobble them up. I don't know. I don't know why anybody would want to, but maybe you could put some pressure on people uh, to do that. But yeah, it's definitely having a huge, huge, huge impact on, uh, on, on the market in Europe. And if we look at Credit Suisse here, this is Credit Suisse. This up here is the bubble before the 2008 banking crisis. That was the bubble high, 2007. And then in 2008, nine, we came down here. We may. Trading view, maybe. There we go. Um, and you thought, well, that was a crisis and a half, right? Well, where have we come to from there? Well, we've dropped from the bottom of the crisis another 91%. 91% below the 2008, the worst day of the 2008 banking crisis, and about 99% from the pre-global financial crisis uh, peak. So I'd say this bank is, is a goner. I, I just don't think this is going to stick around. You don't lose 92% of your value after like the world's worst financial crisis in, in 100 years. So um, this morning, yeah, there is a heartbeat. It's up $4.60, but, you know, it's trading at $2.20. Like when your bank is a penny stock, it is kind of all over, I would say. So here is the last heartbeat, the occasional heartbeat there. But overall, pre-market, we're fizzling out again. We're losing much, much of the gains we've had here this morning. So not a particularly bright story. Now, the futures are not looking too bad in the US. Fear is still up. European stocks had overall a reasonable day so far, uh, although we are only about halfway through the day here in Europe. Uh, Nasdaq is actually up a little bit, and S&P is pretty much flat. The dollar is down a touch, uh, implying possibly that interest rates might go a little lower, a little faster. We have a look at the US two-year yield. It's up. It's up a little 1.2% up to 3.9%, so implying, you know, we're a little bit uh, more pessimistic on, on interest rates. And so that's kind of where we are to start with. Now, there are a couple of things I wanted to look at. Yeah, move. Now, what's move? Move is the bond market fear. And the bond market fear doesn't like pre-market. So let's put that a line on that. Does that? No, this is yesterday. So we might as well look at the day chart. But yesterday it did this. You see that blue line here? That's pretty dramatic. Um, we basically went up 17% yesterday. Uh, we also went up on Monday by 23%. So this is kind of like panic station. This really is panic station. If you put the SPX, the S&P 500 over this, um, 
like that. And then say we flip the bond fear upside down, right? Turn it upside down, upside down. You're turning me, you know, that sort of thing. And what do you see? Well, you see there's a very strong correlation without me twiggling the, the, the chart very much. And you also see that there is a great big gap, my yellow line here, between where the S&P is, which is sort of going, it, everything's all right. It's not that bad, is it? Um, don't worry about it. We will get a bailout. You know how weak spine that lot in Washington is. And then the bond market going, run for the hills, panic, really panic, really proper fear. And it would kind of imply that, I mean, by that measure, which is not particularly accurate, that the S&P should drop very, very, very significantly to catch up with the bond fear. It hasn't. It may never. But that's what the bond market is basically warning you of. Uh, they should basically say, freak out. Um, Danza says HSBC might buy it. I don't know. Do they want to buy a decrepit Swiss bank? I'm not particularly sure that they want to. Um, well, if Michael Burry says the crisis is over, <laughs> I'm sure everything is fine. Uh, hello, Winston. Um, he's not back yet. I haven't seen him yet today, actually. Um, Carlos is in Mallorca. Absolutely lovely. Um, I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, Funky says, good guidance from Adobe. Yep, they're up some five percentage points. Uh, let's see where they roll in for the day. They're up about 4.9% so far, which is fine for our trade. It brings us in at... Uh, you know, it was the sort of top end-ish, 349. Our break even is 360. So that's a fair bit of movement left there. So, uh, but anyway, I'll probably close that out today. I'll, I'll, I'll um, let you guys know what I decide to do with that. So that's kind of where we are this morning. Now, do you want to see what the market's doing overall? I think we probably should. There we go. Let's have a look at the pre-market. So you get a bit of a feel for it. Feel free to put questions into the chat. That's why we do this live every single day. So you can ask questions and I will do my utmost to answer them if I can. If I can't, I'll also tell you that. So it's kind of, look at the numbers, like nothing really major moving here apart from Meta who are just sacking people. Uh, and people seem to love the new Zuckerberg, the new, uh, I don't like my people, let's sack them all. They're useless kind of, that's, that's what the market generally likes, right? That's the sort of manager they like. Oracle is down a bit more, which is nice for our trade. Um, Amazon up a bit. Google up 0.8%. Apple is down just a sliver of 0.1% down. And that's pretty much it in terms of big moves. I mean, not a lot honestly going on here. A uh, bit of consumer non-durables down. Coca-Cola, Nike down a bit, but no huge moves here on that front. So the market's sort of like trying to figure out just how bad this news really is, if it is really bad news or if it's sort of all over. I think that's where we're going to find ourselves today. But volatility is up. Bond market, which in my view is where the smart people sit, um, is basically screaming panic at the top of their lungs. Be interesting to see how the market opens with that. So I always pay heed to the bond market. I trust those guys a little bit more. Uh, DB Workplay, appreciate that. Moon, nationalize it. Um, I don't know how the Swissies feel about nationalizing uh, their banks. That's kind of like almost the size of their GDP. So it's a fairly sizable bank for them. So I, I kind of think more maybe a uh, former competitor could swoop in and, and gobble them up. That might be the way that they do it. And maybe you even form a bad bank and put a bit of the rubbish in there. That's usually the way they've done it. Um, Michael, ticker on the bond ETF. I never trade bond ETFs, um, but obviously there are loads depending on what you're looking for. Is there a reason why you look at pre-market tickets instead of equity futures like ES and NQ1? I do look at ES for sure. NQ, yeah, it's, you could look at that, but at this time of the day, QQQ is also trading, so it doesn't make a huge difference. But yeah, you could definitely look at NQ. Um, individual stocks, well, I think it gives you a little bit more of a of a diverse, detailed breakdown of what's going on in the market, right? You can kind of see, is there a pattern here? Are there certain sectors that are recovering? Like banking, for example, is relatively green this morning. So people are like, maybe those Europeans are going to sort that out. Maybe SVB, the worst is behind us. Um, so it gives you a bit more of a feeling for it. But I, I, yeah, I like to look at both, you know, move, SPX, ES, uh, you know, whatever it is that you want to look at as, at your, as your drug of choice. It all gives you, gives you bits of information, which is obviously super important. So, yeah, we can look at NQ if you like. That's the S&P futures. Uh, they are basically flat. QQQ would tell you pretty much the same story. That, yeah, 
absolutely flat pre-market. So not a lot going on here. Um, and that's sort of the, the wait and see approach. VIX is still up 2.4%, which is the fear index for equities. Um, but look at what VIX has done and then compare that to move bond fear. And um, bond fear has gone through the roof while VIX has actually come down. Um, and I, I always think that the bond traders are a little smarter than our stock investors. A.T. Feffy, did you used to work as a lawyer before? Yeah, I was an English solicitor for a little while, uh, corporate law sort of stuff. You should work at the Ripple SEC a positive outcome could trigger a bigger bull run in the, in the crypto market. Um, yeah, I'm not, A.T. Feffy, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm not particularly... I, I, I watch crypto from a distance, I, I would say. I'm not particularly engaged with it. And Funky, you're, you're quite right. Like we have seen some inflows into the more quality stocks uh, where we've seen outflows out of the more dodgy looking ones. Uh, initial jobless claims less than forecast. Uh, let's have a look at the latest data here. Where is it? Uh, yes, leave page. Um, jobless claims, 192. Yeah. That's not great, is it? Continuing jobless claims are down again. Whoa, we're below 1.7 again. So less unemployment again in the US than expected. Um, while manufacturing is tanking, building permits have shot up, but that could be a bit of a random piece of data. But yeah, new orders are down. Prices paid are down somewhat, but not enough. Business conditions are uh, burrowing into the core of the earth. Um, capital expenditure is appalling, but still less unemployment in the US. Uh, thanks very much for that, for putting that out. Um, um, you guys are asking about oil. Well, shall we look at it? Let's have a look at it. Where did the stock chart go? Let's pick them one up. I mean, oil is um. Uh, what, what, what do you? What's your? What's your um. Thingy of choice. Um, I, I tend to not really trade oil itself. I usually go for uh, one of the one of the big stocks or something. Uh, but we could certainly use at uh, crude oil or something like that. So we're trading at. 67. Whoa, it's pretty low, hey? So there it is. Let's get rid of the SPX here. It's picked up a bit, but it's still... I don't understand why we're trading sideways so much. I would have thought this would have gone up a lot, but it hasn't. Um, so it seems very, very range-bound. It's breaking out a bit here, which is an, an interesting development. Um, but that's like crude oil, but uh, what, what's the... Um, Crude oil is 67, the WTI. Yeah, it's the same thing, same thing basically here. So more volume, more trading. Honestly, I I, I find oil prices kind of a little bizarre. Um, why? Because there is a lot to There's a lot of politics that goes with it, right? There's a lot of stuff that isn't really market driven, uh, but OPEC obviously controls a lot of this. Um, and we are kind of, we are speculating that the US would refill its reserves. But so far, um, El Presidente is just deciding to just basically give it all away and not refill it, which is an interesting move. Do you think rates are going to go up? I personally do. I, I still think that rates are going to go up quarter point. I just think if they don't, uh, it just screams of panic and the Fed wants to look calm and collected. They don't want to look like a panicking institution. So they're likely going to still do that. The market's also pricing that in um, one or two more rate hikes. Uh, Zidane saying thoughts on the SoFi CEO buying more shares. Um, I mean, it's a, I imagine it's a strategic move to shore up confidence in, in uh, SoFi. I don't think they are really affected by it directly. Their depositor base is pretty solid. And um, so I don't think they really have an issue with that. They don't really have exposure to crypto or tech companies or anything of the like. Uh, so it's probably just a, just a smart move on his part to make the company look a little stronger. Um, is your oil chart inverted? 
<laughs> yes, it is. Uh, that's a good one. Um, that's brilliant. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, I thought that was a weird one. <laughs> and there we are. So don't turn your charts upside down. It's like a newspaper, isn't it? So yes, okay. That makes a little more sense here. So oil has come down quite quite a bit, um, which is the opposite of what I expected. Uh, and I, I guess that was, that was why I was thinking. Um, I was expecting it to go up. It's gone down. Um, Maybe more, more recession fears and that sort of thing. Um, so Thomas, uh, well spotted there, and James, uh, you get a gold star. Um, indeed. Um, James says, lol. Um, if you haven't signed up for the wisdom of my masterclass where charts will probably not be inverted, at least uh, if you can help it, <laughs> sign up for that here. Uh, Phoenix Spencer log slash PA Wealth is the link. It's also in the chat. It's also the first one in the description. We're holding it live next uh, on the 22nd of March. And uh, I'll be doing like a 90 minute proper lecture on how I trade and, and how the Wall Street really trades. And uh, what we can learn from that to reduce risk, hedge our positions, um, actually eliminate risk at zero cost, which I think is a concept most people don't fully understand. And um, I'll also be do a spot of life trading so you can really see what I'm doing there. JD says, you're considering a coaching call. What makes a difference from Schwab's, Edward Jones, or TD Ameritrade's? I can't really comment on those. I can really only comment on what, what, what we do. Um, so me and a group of former investment bankers with about 100 years experience between us uh, basically show you how we trade, uh, what we consider the strategies that actually make sense and the risk management that really makes sense and can hold your hand and guide you through it. And I think it just accelerates learning tremendously. I wish I would have had that uh, when I first started out. Um, I had some fair guidance from some people in, in the industry I knew because I used to be a banker, banker for a little while. But yeah, that's essentially that. So we're not trying to, um, we, you know, we'd never sell you any financial products or anything like that because I don't think that's a good idea to mix that. We basically just teach you not just the theory and the strategy, but actually how we implement it. And you can see it and you can see my trades transparently um, as well as what all the other coaches are doing who are actually managing money. Like, um, you know, some of them are running some pretty sizable portfolio. Um, lost. Um, I don't think Credit Suisse will merge with 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 uh, HSBC. Um, HSBC is a Hong Kong bank, um, British Hong Kong bank. Uh, really, um, I don't think a Swiss regulator has any particular sway over them. Uh, but what you've seen in the past is that regulators approach major banks that they have sort of under their thimble, and they go, "Well, it'd be rather jolly if you bought that, and then we sort of." guarantee it and bail it out a bit and make the loans really cheap for you, that sort of thing. Uh, that's often what's happened in Europe uh, because European governments are typically fairly heavily involved in the banks, uh, which is now where you are getting to in the US. So that's kind of what I would think. I would think a Swiss bank might step in there. Um, FTX earnings trade today, um, 95. Yeah, I saw that. I think, are they reporting today or tomorrow? FedEx... Um, Today, at the end of today, right? Yeah. So I'll have a look at that, see whether I think that's a good idea or not. Uh, Travis, you're very kind. JD, you can't divulge. You want to learn how to beat the competition. I don't think it's really a competitive sport. And I think that's something that's what I love about options trading. It's never about beating someone. Like I make money. It doesn't mean the guy on the other side loses money. And that's, I think, one of the marvels of options trading. There is a, there is a middleman called the market maker. And we have a former market maker on our team as a coach. And um, if once you really understand how that works, not only do you understand that there isn't a loser, but you also understand hedging flows and, and, and how that can help you set up better trades. I think that's really important. Lost in PKK. No, no, yeah, you know, some sort of incentive, right? I mean, regulators basically have a lot of sway over banks. Uh, so there is definitely stuff. You know, the government, the Swiss Fed essentially already chucked 50 billion in their, their direction. What's another 50 billion loan at basically zero interest or something like that to sweeten the deal or help recapitalize it or, you know, maybe take a stake? Who knows? Uh, the only person you have to beat in the market is yourself, indeed. Game theory. Yeah, I studied economics, so we did a lot of game theory. Um, yeah, makes sense. What's your favorite two right now to play for volatility crush? 
well, if you think volatility is going to come down, then there are a couple of strategies that would benefit from falling volatility, right? And, and you could you could set those up. And I mean, you know, the earnings trades we do are typically credit spreads because that makes a lot of sense uh, or, or some variety thereof. Um, once you master that and you're consistent with that, then I think there are other things one can look at that are potentially, you know, help you make, make higher returns. Um, Sumit, um, if you join one of our courses, um, all of our courses have a 90 day refund guarantee. Our coaching also has a, has a guarantee policy. If you want to really understand how that functions and how that works, um, hop on a call. That's why we do calls because we can answer all your questions. How do you get on a call? Go to felixfrenzelog slash coaching down below and, um, we'll ask all, all your questions, Sumit. Philco. Ah, yes, indeed. Long time no see. Philco was, I think, one of our first viewers when we started out this little channel about two years ago. So I appreciate that uh, very much. Uh, you're tuning in uh, once again. So shall we see a little recap of the market? So we've got um, lower than expected unemployment once again, which you wouldn't think the market would be particularly fond of because it just means the Fed has to keep hiking rates. You've got the QQQ down a sliver now. The S&P is basically flat-ish, zero, minus 0.2%. 0 the market not too perturbed by job status today because they're kind of like, yeah, we kind of know now we're going to get another interest rate. We've sucked it up. Uh, in Europe, we have Credit Suisse uh, getting bailed out by um, the Swiss central bank. Uh, they've chucked 50 billion francs at it. How much is 50 billion francs? I think it's about the same. Uh, CHF 50 billion in USD. Let me ask Google. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same. It's about 60 billion US dollars or something like that. So it's a, it's a fair, fair, fair chunk, chunk of change. And um, Credit Suisse is up 5% today, but it is also down 91% from the bottom of the 2008 banking crisis and 99% since 2007. So that bank's gone. I don't think it's coming back. That will be my view on that. What are the key differences between VIX and VVIX? Um, VVIX is the VIX of the VIX. <laughs> so it's the volatility of the volatility index or the volatility of the fear index. So it's kind of the underlying piece that measures the speed of movement of the VIX, if you will. Um, a little, little strange, I know, but it's useful. Uh, Phil, quite brilliant. Are you studying economics? Um, that's what I did as well. Um, that's not a, not a bad thing to do with your time. Uh, Slappy, what is it when I sell an option using another long dated option as collateral? Sort of a calendar? Is that what you're collateral? Not quite sure what you mean there, Slop, Slappy. It can still go down another 90%. Indeed, James, you're quite right on that. It's a trading at $2, it could go to 20 cents quite easily. And Charles saying bailouts are inflationary. And you're, again, very, very correct on that, Charles. It's, it's, it's like insanity, isn't it? Basically, the money shredding and higher interest rates are helping to break the rubbish banks that are poorly run. And then we bail out the rubbish banks that are poorly run, which is sort of bizarre, isn't it? We're shredding money while we're giving money out to the banks that are the worst run banks in the, in, in the world. It's, it's really insanity. And that's where we are at the moment. Total insanity. Uh, Poor man's covered call. Could be. Could be. I'm not a huge fan of covered calls. Turn the money printer on down. So, yeah. So, I think, I think personally, my view would be that um, quantitative tightening is pretty much near an end. I kind of can't see them like shredding that much more money, which basically means we are stuck with this much more um, interest. Uh, so this much more cash floating around, which is obviously good for um, asset prices and and, and so on. Uh, but um, yeah, it's it makes it harder to remove the inflation from the system, and therefore interest rates are going to have to be higher for longer, which in itself could break some stuff. So it's going to be a really interesting year, I would say. James doesn't need to like, let banks fail. Protect the depositors, and the banks might pull their socks off. 
how do you let a bank fail and then bail out the depositors? It's sort of like, you mean just like sack the staff, lose the bank license, but everybody gets their money. That's sort of what they're doing in the US, isn't it? I mean, that's sort of what they're doing. It's still not exactly a bank failure. Andre, what did I miss? Okay, I'll do a quick recap in a second. Travis says, if the Fed goes to zero, uh, everything they discredit everything they said. I believe they'll do a 25% uh, rate hike with a dervish speech. Um, yes, I agree with that. Whether stocks are going to go up from that or not is a question. It depends very much on the language again. I think everybody's now expecting the 25% basis point hike. Um, and then... Yeah, it really depends on what they say. As in, like, you know, we feel like we might be near the peak or the of of of, of the thing. Uh, they also have to give us a um, a new dot plot. So, like, how high are rates going to go? And I think that be interesting. Like, is that going to be the six percent we feared, or might it just stay maybe around the five point five, five point seven five? In which case, the market will probably start celebrating a little bit. But uh, bank runs are not really a part of the celebratory story. Uh, generally, Credit Suisse in Europe is um, so it's trading at 5% 5, 5 up pre-market in the US at the moment, but it's at $2.27, which isn't exactly particularly wonderful. Danzo, 7% interest rate possible. Everything's possible, Danzo. I mean, at the moment, I think if inflation rates started to really, really pick up again, then that might do the trick. But PPI was okay. So I, I kind of get the feeling that it might not, at least not in the short term. But yeah, you need a real inflation spike, I think, to make to make, justify that. Thomas thinks they should just get it over and done with. I think they enjoy the long drawn out pain, <laughs> Thomas. Uh, so I think I think they are going to probably get a quarter point height there. I think also they don't want to be seen to like over overdoing it. Um, and Filco, you're right. Credit Suisse's downfall has been going on for a long time. Let me show you this chart here. Uh, this is Credit Suisse. Let's go back a little while to say. There we go. There is Credit Suisse. It looks like one of those uh, technology stocks that aren't, is, aren't making any money, right? So this is Credit Suisse. This up here is 2007. That's the pre-global financial crisis bubble. It lost, how much did it lose to the bottom of the market? 75%. And I was like, oh my God, it's the end of the world. Well, it isn't. It's lost since the bottom of that crash another 86 percentage points. So uh, this bank has basically been dying since the early 2000s. And it's obviously just appallingly run. Now, what's a little bit more concerning is like, how are the other big European banks handling this? So like Deutsche Bank is trading at 10 bucks, uh, which is another one of these beasts that really, you know, one should be kind to and, and just put it out of its misery. Uh, so Deutsche Bank at the bottom of the global financial crisis was trading at $19. Uh, right now. So it's down about 50 percentage points since the bottom, the worst day of the global financial crisis. So these are just not good banks, but they're huge. They're massive and Europe can't let them fail. Funky thinks that China's um, exports picking up is going to be uh, deflationary. Somewhat, somewhat. Um, right here, guys. So that's kind of where we were at this morning. We are looking at um, fairly flattish market. Uh, volatility is still up, though. Bond fear is still through the roof. Honestly, if I would watch one chart that I would watch as an indicator of what the heck's going on here, I watch uh, move. It's the bond fear. It's like the VIX of the bond market. I think that's a pretty good indicator. Yesterday, they pretty much panicked by their standards. You know, they glanced up from their screens three times that day. And uh, we're up 17 percentage points on that. It doesn't um, trade pre-market. So I don't think there is a new future, is there? Have a look for one. 
Um, let's have a look. Bond volatility. VIX as futures. If you could spell bond. No, I don't think there is. No, no, I don't think there is. So I'd watch out for that one for sure. I think that's a, that's an important one to look at. Um, German banks recommend one. That's, that's a tough one. Um, I think, again, the similar situation applies. German government guarantees your first 100,000 euros deposits. Um, just don't go much beyond that in cash, I would say. That's the way I, I would look at that and spread it around a bit. Jay says 84 thumbs up. Yeah, we could do with a few more thumbs up, right? Maybe because I, uh, you know, I just sort of got here. Um, we're not winning the war on inflation. When did everything become a war on something? The war on inflation. It's not a war. It's... But yes, I, uh, you know, it just means you're watching too much CNN, I think. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's where we're at this morning. If you haven't already signed up for the masterclass, do phoenixfriends.org slash PA Wealth. The link is the first one in the description and also the one in the comments that I just posted. Uh, sign up for that if you want to learn how Wall Street bankers basically make more money than you do while taking zero risk at zero cost. That's pretty much the premise of that. Uh, so check it out. Uh, links down below. I look forward to seeing you on that live. We'll be back later tomorrow for sure, live pre-market. And of course, if something major happens, like you know, a bank breaks or fails or something, which is fairly likely to happen, then you'll be the first to hear it here. And make sure you smash that subscribe button. And if you want to learn how we uh, trade and how we make money, again, you can also give us a ring at phoenixfriends.org slash coaching. Uh, super happy to have a chat with you and, and, and walk you through how we do what we do and how it may be beneficial to you. Uh, I appreciate you watching and tuning in. I hope to see you on the next one.